When you're MIG welding vertically, it's pretty common for the weld to sag down and end up a bit lumpy. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're looking at vertical MIG welding. Most of the welding we've done on the channel has been in the flat or horizontal position just to learn basic techniques. But when you go to weld vertically, there are some things that you need to pay attention to. So the first thing to decide is what your progression is going to be. Are you going to travel vertically up or vertically down? We're going to do both today to show you how to do it. I'm welding on one eighth of an inch thick material. And for me, that's the threshold between vertical up and vertical down. If you're thinner than that, it's a good idea to go down so you don't burn through. Thicker than that, good idea to go up so that you actually penetrate into the material. The first weld we'll run though is going to be in the horizontal position, just sitting on the bench to get a baseline so we can understand where we go from those settings and that technique. I'm just moving as steadily as I can, maintaining a steady stick out gun angle, and travel speed, and it's filling in pretty nicely. When we take a look after it's done, I got a nice smooth weld. So let's try those same settings and a very similar technique with one slight change, welding in the vertical position. I've tacked a T-joint up here to be able to weld it vertically, and I'm going to make a little dry run, make sure that I can make it all the way through the joint with my hand to prop and make sure I'm steady and I'm going to be running a slight uphill 15 degree uh, push angle on my gun. That's pretty common for vertical MIG welding and I'm gonna use that same technique throughout the video. So I'm welding vertically up here and it seems like it's filling in, but after I run this stringer bead all the way up with those same settings that work so well in the horizontal position, we take a look at it and it's pretty lumpy, it's really crowned up in the center, and that's really the common problem that you have when you run MIG vertically, especially vertical up. And so I'm gonna show you how to correct that. The first way we're gonna do it is we're gonna weld downhill. I could probably get away with running those same settings, running vertically down, but I'm gonna turn it down about 10%, and that's just gonna keep it from running away from me. And I really am just running a stringer bead. Once again, I'm pointed uphill at about 15 degrees as far as travel angle goes maintaining a steady stick out and a consistent travel speed and everything's laying in just fine. Now let's look at welding vertically up. I'm not only gonna change my settings once again, but I'll also change my technique to introduce a little bit of gun manipulation like I mentioned before. So as far as settings go, when we're welding vertically up, you're really fighting gravity. And so that puddle is only gonna go so fast, it's gonna slow you down quite a bit. And if you've watched my MIG settings video, or especially if you've taken my online courses and worked through the exercises there, you'll really understand that in order to travel more slowly, you need to use less amperage. And the way you control your amperage is turning down your wire speed. A lot of people don't realize this at first, but it's a really important concept to grasp and really understand and probably something worth experimenting with. For the gun manipulation technique, I'm just tracing up along the front leading edge of that puddle, moving around in little loops or triangles. I'm spending a little bit more time at each corner, then I'm gonna touch the front leading edge and then the other corner on the other side. I'm not going all the way to the edge of the puddle because the puddle will go further than the arc, but I'm going over and giving some time for it to tie in and that helps everything to lay in nice and flat. So after this is run, we can take a look. There's a little bit of a pattern to it and it laid in there much better than just welding that stringer bead vertically up like we did in the beginning. So that's the way to get through a vertical up weld. So let's just summarize really quickly. On thin stuff, it's a good idea to weld vertically down so you don't melt your way through. You just turn your settings down about 10% run a basic stringer bead, and that's about all there is to it. On thicker material, vertical up is the way to go, and you're gonna need to turn your settings down one or two material thicknesses on your chart, and then trace that front leading edge of the puddle, making sure you touch that front corner to penetrate down into it, and then tie it in on both sides of the edge, and be patient because the travel speed here is a bit slower than you might be used to in the flat and horizontal positions. Now, if you do wanna understand those settings and how they work a little bit better, I'll link two videos down in the description that'll help you out a lot. And I'll also put a link to my online courses. I don't charge a lot for them, and they are really comprehensive to help you get going fast if you are just starting out. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.